Welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast with Joshua Latimer, where we discuss business, life, family, faith, struggle, fire, pain, and ultimately winning. It's time to take massive action. Look, I, I can't work harder on your life or business than you do. It's ultimately all on you. So, you know, God created all the food the birds would ever need, but he doesn't put it in their nest. You've got to go get it. 10 out of 10 people die. So how about doing something today that actually matters while you still can? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast. Hope you guys are having an amazing week. I am happy right now because I have my lovely high school sweetheart, wife, of 15 and a half years. Is that right? 15 and a half years? Yep. Yep. She's back by popular demand. I can't even tell you guys how many emails, messages, comments, tr- Facebook stuff I get from people saying, have your wife back on. I need my <laughs> wife to listen to your wife. Or or the opposite, right? So it doesn't matter who the entrepreneur is in your relationship. Maybe both of you. Maybe one of you. Maybe it's the husband. Maybe it's the wife. But nonetheless, there are real struggles and challenges that come uh, from having an, an, a business, right? So we're going to add value to you and give you some of our perspective because we have a perfect life and we figured everything out. <laughs> no. <laughs> and everything's amazing. And we actually haven't fought in 15 and a half years. Mm. Or was yes. it 15 and a half minutes? 15 that, and a half minutes, Oh, that's probably. what it was. I knew there was a 15 and a half in there. Uh, and apparently my wife, according with all my kids, uh, have made the claim that I'm officially useless when it comes to humor and I only have dad jokes now. <laughs> He does. He only has dad jokes. I don't, the jokes. dad joke is a synonym with amazingly funny joke, in my mind. How come mm. you don't see it that way? They're just getting really bad. Oh, come on. I'm doing the best I can. It's some sort of genetic change or something. I, I don't know what's happening with me. Uh, let's talk today about some of the systems that we use in our relationship, mm-hmm. which are not perfect, right? Remember, the goal isn't perfection. It's progress. And systems are so amazing and important, but they're never perfect. You look at like a McDonald's even, right? I've still gotten my pop. We call it pop. You call it soda down south, but up here in Michigan, we call it pop. I'll go there and get a pop at McDonald's, and sometimes it's not filled all the way to the top. And they have a million dollars worth of research and development that went into their little soda pop machine conveyor belt system that auto fills your thing, right? Uh, But it usually works, but it doesn't always work. It's not perfect. And the goal isn't perfection. In fact, one of the things that holds you guys back is that you do nothing until you feel like you can achieve a perfect result. And that is a big problem for people. Uh, Instead, you should take massive, imperfect action. Shout out to Michael Gebbin, who gave me that phrase. And I have a t-shirt now that says massive, imperfect action. Uh, That's what it's all about. So, Ash, why don't you take it away and give some of your thoughts. Um, I would just say that systems can always be tweaked, and sometimes systems don't continue to work. I mean, sometimes they work really well for a while or a season, and then you might need to tweak them and add new ones. Um, We started adding systems into our, like we added systems into our business, but then you added started adding systems into our family life, and that um, was huge. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we even need to reevaluate systems, Mm -hmm. like. Yeah, because then it can become, like, especially with family, um, I don't know, like, there's a difference between doing something because it's the way it's always been done and, like, a really fun family tradition. For example, like, if your family tradition is to take a certain camping trip every 4th of July, that's really cool, and your kids will remember that, right? But it's also okay to not do the camping trip to go on a different vacation. And some people feel like they can't, there's no elasticity, like, no, this is how we do it. This is how we have date night. This is what our life looks like. This is, I do this on this day. And uh, I think that's bad because then it makes it more robotic and stuff. And ever since Maverick, my oldest son, he's 11 now, just had a birthday. When he was about three, I think, he might have been four, somewhere around there, I started doing Maverick Monday. I didn't really think a lot about it, but it was one of the smartest things I ever did because it just worked. It was really cool. And then as I got busier and busier in my business, um, it kind of backed me in a corner in a good way to where I feel pressure every Monday to make sure that I'm intentionally spending time with him. And of course, we have five kids, so now it's totally spiraled out of control. So I have Sawyer Sunday, Maverick Monday, Tucker Tuesday, Finley Friday, which we're just about to start doing. And we have our baby Judah sitting on Ashley's lap in here. Um, But I guess my point is, is 
it's really powerful to have structure in a system, but it's not perfect. Sometimes I miss weeks. When we were building the super course, I missed lots of weeks. Every Tucker Tuesday, I missed for two months because I had w- webinars on Tuesday nights. And uh, it wasn't perfect, so I'd do it on Wednesday. Or I wouldn't do it at all that week. And I'd do the best that I could. But overall, I think these things have added a lot of value to our life. What do you think? They have added a lot of value. Like even having date night every Saturday. And when we don't have date night, it's like things just don't operate as well anymore. Mm -hmm. And some people think that maybe it's weird to have it like scheduled. Like, oh, you're scheduling something. That doesn't mean you can't do surprises and date nights any other day. It just carves out some time in your schedule that says this is dedicated to that. And how, I mean, how much more loving can that be saying, especially to an entrepreneur who is taking, who could work a million hours. Let's be honest, entrepreneurship could never stop. Um, But how does that make a spouse feel to say, I carved out this time? Yeah, and if you base everything you do just on spontaneity, like, oh, let's just, let's go on a date night tonight. That's fine, but would you rather do that 16 times a year or would you rather be intentional and have a little bit of structure and a system behind it and do it 52 times a year or at least have it scheduled 52 and even if you miss some, you're still going to do 40 of them. It's just better, right? It's all about systems are about being intentional about how, right? So we all want to spend time with our spouse. We all want to um, have a good marriage and stuff. Um, but we have to be really specific about how we're going to do that, right? Mm-hmm. And date night is a good system, and the special days with my kids are a good system. And I, and I would have to say, uh, you can be honest, and we can tell the truth to your podcast listeners. No, we're not allowed to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> this is all up front. I did have a little bit of a meltdown this week. Uh, and my husband, when he handles my meltdowns, he's like, okay, I see you're stressed. What kind of sim- system can we implement to make this be better? And what it basically came down to is um, the super course has been super intensive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and I know that's probably the same people that have um, been a part of the super course, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, all night being gone and all these other days. And I was stressed. I was doing a lot on the home front by myself. And so he said, what do you need? Let's put a system. So we have some new systems in place. Like Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to Saturday because Saturday I get four hours to do whatever I want by myself. And I am so (laughs) excited. Yeah. And what's funny is we have five kids. You guys might not have that. But imagine this. Every waking hour, every waking moment of your life, a tiny hand is climbing on you, crawling on you, pulling on your leg, yelling at you, crying, pooping on something, screaming, or doing something that they're not supposed to be doing, right? So a- Ashley had said something like, I just feel alone right now. And I was like, are you kidding me? You're surrounded by people all the time. She's like, oh, wait, let me, let me rephrase that. I want to be alone right now. I need time for myself. And the thing is, is that the way my brain is wired is I'm not always hyper aware of that. And if she doesn't communicate to me clearly and just tell me, then I won't know. And so what happens is we have resentment because of unmet expectations. And and even us, we know this stuff intellectually, but we'll still do it. You know, I'll still come home and think that Ashley should have done something that I is just a nagging thing in my mind, but haven't clearly communicated it. And then I get really mad or I'm in a bad mood. And she does that to me. And we all do that to each other. That's crazy. Um, most of the issues and stress in our life is 100% correctable, fixable, and solvable. But emotionally, it feels like Mount Everest, right? Oh, yeah. Talk about Mount Everest. How, how <laughs> I always say that. What do I mean? It means that there's certain things that we think are humongous um, deals that can't be conquered um, in, a, in a quick fix, but they actually can be. Uh. And I am one that can make Mount Everest really fast. I don't know if it's a female thing or if it's just a me thing, but... I can have the world fall apart in like a few minutes, can't yeah, I? And I can too. Like I, you know, I, I come on the podcast and I'm super positive, motivational, trying to add massive value to you guys every day. But I am a normal person. I freak out and go home and get mad and get really overreact over something really little or something will break or there's another issue and I'm already tired and and you just want to freak, right? Um, and so what happens in our brain is that little thing, that item that whatever, that need, that unmet expectation, it feels like Mount Everest. It feels like, oh my gosh, how am I going to summit this mountain? How can I possibly ever be happy again? Even though it's really just us being very dramatic because we can't see clearly when we're going through something. So communication 
is so important. And we're not perfect at this, but I think we're far above average at it. I really do. And we just kind of lay it out there and then we fix it. So what we did for you, you needed some time by yourself, which is <laughs> a very reasonable request with the mm -hmm. insane life that we live, especially right now. Because uh, we're in scale mode, right? With Send Gem, we're doing yep. crazy stuff. Um, and even though you're on board with the vision of what we're doing, it's still really hard, right? I also need reminders. Reminders, yep. Communicate. Oh, that's what the other thing we wanted to talk about. Yes, is that um, not everybody in the relationship has the same need for uh, refocusing and resetting the vision on the mountaintop. So you guys hear me talk about the mountaintop, the why, why are you doing what you're doing, what is the destination? And then it might take four years for you to get to your mountaintop. I don't know. But during that journey, if you're like me, you can put your head down, get tunnel vision, and just go to work, start digging, right? Just chopping wood, just you're doing it. But then I might not come up for air for six months, and I haven't lost focus of the vision. I'm still like tired and have bad days, but I'm 100% focused in tunnel vision on the vision. Not everybody's like that. I think most people probably are not like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's important uh, that we constantly recast vision to our family. Reminding them why daddy's staying out late tonight, that it's not going to last forever, that it's for a season in our life, and, and making sure that everybody's on board with your vision, right? Um, I would have to add to that. That is huge uh, for people who are like me, who are sitting at home taking care of the home front. Like when you're doing lots of diapers and meals and, you know, you're doing parent-teacher conferences by yourself and different things like that, you need to be reminded because we don't see the business side day in and day out. So we are just a little bit disconnected from that. And so sometimes it'd be help, it is helpful to like re reestablish the why reestablish the why. And it's risky because it might not work as fast as we thought. Right. And we've had, there's that. a lot of faith and trust because you can believe like for me, I always say I live in the future, which is a blessing and a curse. Like all I can see is the next thing. In fact, just as we launched the super course internally to our SendGem customers yesterday, we just kind of did a slow launch to our customers. I'm already getting super clear on what the next thing is that I got to build. I know, and that stresses me out so bad. <laughs> because I live in the future. I'm trying, by the time someone copies my step one, I want to be on step four. And I, and I think it's valuable for you as an entrepreneur to think like that, right? But... At the same time, we have to reestablish uh, the why on a regular basis uh, because you can get burned out. It's not that my wife doesn't want to do what we all agreed to want to do in the beginning. It's just that it's hard and you get burned out and you get adrenal fatigue and you just want to panic and jump out the window and go run and hide in the woods. I don't know. But overwhelm is a real thing. And not just for you as a business owner, but for all the people in your family uh, who are going through a lot of stress that you might not be aware of because you have tunnel vision on the business, right? Yeah. Um, I just thought of something that was like super, I feel, important. Um, I've had a lot of people reach out to me saying, um, I wish my wife was like you or I'd, I want my wife to listen to this and, and different things like that. I think that's wonderful. That puts a lot of pressure on me, just saying, <laughs> um, um, because I don't always feel motivational and I don't always want to be motivational. And sometimes I'm not motivational. But um, what I would say is I know you're working a lot long hours. Some of you are ramping up for your season. It's going to be a long season. Um, but go home and love your spouse well. Be the person to step out first and say, hey, I, I see you where you're at. Um, I think that would be huge. You don't want a wife like me. You already have your wife. You picked her out. Mm. She's special. Um, so Your husband is the same way. You said yes to him for some reason, and um, it's still there. Just go home and love them well and, and do it first. You just kind of dust it off. I remember when we first got married, um, our pastor in like pre-marriage counseling had said something or we learned somewhere that the goal of a husband and wife should be to outserve each other. And <laughs> you know, I, I always say, joke, you what go do first. I say? You go first. Yeah, I always say, hey, let's try to just outserve each other. You go first. <laughs> 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 That's not a dad joke. That's legit funny. People are laughing right now all over the world. I hope they are. I'm laughing. They right are. You. I crushed that joke. That was amazing. Um, 
Okay, so here's our encouragement. Uh, don't focus on perfection. Focus on being intentional with systems. It's okay to have intentional time with your kids, with your wife. And, and remember, when they're freaking out, there's always a story behind the story. So they're freaking out because you weren't home in time for dinner, but it's really more than that. What the real story behind the story is is that they would love to have coffee with you and talk to you, not about business, for 30 minutes a day. Well, oh, that was one of our new systems. That's one of our systems is that um, we haven't had a lot of, like, just – boring run-of-the-mill conversations because no. we see each other or we're in bed at, at night but our two-year-old will come crawling our bed or, or something's always together. happening and we're talking about business or we're doing stuff we're really commit we're over committed a little bit right now because of our choices which we do want those choices but it takes a toll and uh so yeah when you're having your mount everest moment i'm like okay what do you need like how can i serve you what can we do this is fixable <laughs> The big one was like four hours for you to go by yourself with no kids and just shop and meet people and eat Drink coffee. a bagel and just read a book or something. It's amazing. I would like to be bored. That's what it is. You want to be bored, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then the next one was that starting two days a week, I'm going to be home really, really early. Like I'll be home at 3 o'clock because our kids don't get home from school until 4 o'clock. And we're just going to talk. I'm going to be like, so how's it going? Your hair looks pretty. How was how, your day how today? Are you? It doesn't have to be some epic thing. It's just quality time. My wife's love language is quality time, which I have not delivered to you very well in the last few months. So I'm really sorry about that. Right. But I, I am motivational. I know I, you I are. I do fire you up. You are. And some it's of you so guys true. that are mad at your wives are horrible at casting vision, helping them understand what's in it for them, reminding them of why they want what they said they wanted. You're the leader. Be the freaking leader. It doesn't mean you're perfect. But she's going to forgive you. Say you're sorry. Just admit when you mess up. It's basic stuff. Uh, but don't shut down and don't not communicate and don't be passive aggressive. That is so dumb. Don't do that. You guys love yeah. each other. You have, love each other. Have grace with one another. Yes. Have grace. You know what that means in case you think we're just using all these Jesus-y words? It just means that you give people the benefit of the doubt and you just be nice even when you're – like because it's really quick decision. Like you're supposed to be home at 6. You're there at 6.30. And the wife is really mad, right? But really mad because she doesn't have quality time. But in all reality, it doesn't matter that he's 30 minutes late. Like, dinner wasn't even ready yet. So you have a decision to make in a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. Be a butthole or have grace. Those are your two choices. <laughs> are you allowed to say butthole <laughs> in the air? <laughs> no, I should have said be rude and or give grace. But it just came out, and now it's, it's out there. But anyway, do you have any final thoughts on this topic? I have lots of final thoughts. Um... One of my final thoughts is just a fun fact. I like weird, random fun facts. It gets me through life. I don't know why, but uh, the Webster Dictionary, they always add new words. And one of the words was dumpster fire that they added to the dictionary. That's two words, though, right? I don't know how it works, but dumpster fire. And sometimes we like to think that our life is a dumpster fire and it's not fixable. But a few systems can fix that and make it be amazing, and it won't be a dumpster fire. Mm. It's not Mount Everest. Um, you can really overcome a lot with some new systems, hearing each other out. Yeah, find the story behind the story, put something in place. You give a little, let them give a little, and it will be way better, right? Take, take your wife some flowers. It's almost spring. Everybody's got a little taste of winter depression. I was talking to my buddy Chase the other day, and, you know, he's working a ton. This guy's company is growing so fast, and he listens to the show, so I'm sure that he'll hear this. But yeah, he's my friend. He was just, he's crushing life, but at the same time, he had a cushy corporate job before. And so he made a lot of money, and he was home. I don't know what time he got home, but he was home at the same time every day, early in the day. You know, he could leave work at work. And now he started a small business. They're doing like 50000 60000 a month, and he didn't even start go full-time until less than a year ago, which is amazing. Amazing, And so for me, man to man with him, I'm like high five and I'm like, yeah, hustle, grind, grow, do it. But it caused a lot of pressure on the family. Duh, because everything's on its head. It's all disrupted. Now, his, his family's on board with what he's doing. But he's like, you know, I just I need to spend more time with my wife. I need to do this. I need to do that. And you know what I told him? I said, do it right now. Stop right now. Let's schedule it right now. And this is what a system is. It's being intentional. I said, to schedule something for, if you're booked three weeks out, let's look at week four. Let's get it on the calendar right now. If she needs alone time, make it freaking happen. I said, can you coordinate something for her to be alone, blah, 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 blah. He's like, yeah, I can do that. I said, schedule it right now. There's no reason this can't be done in the next 15 minutes. You need a vacation, schedule it now. Because when you're not thinking out like that, um, you just, you can't squeeze it in, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. if I'm in the middle of the fire and I have a crazy super course week, and this is a huge important piece of our business this year. 
And then my wife freaks and is like, I need you home today at five. I, I can't. It's like I can't right now. I mean, I, I technically could, but all these other people are relying on me to deliver things. I'm overcommitted. So you got to get ahead of it. You got to schedule it out. And then the last thing on my little notes here, Ash, is you were going to talk about when we we're in Costa Rica. You had postpartum depression, and you're like a really happy, bubbly person. And when this happened, it was like the craziest thing ever. Super weird. It's a real thing. It's weird chemically. It was crazy. Talk about that. Um, well, I've never even had a t- I, I'm a glass half full type of person normally. Um, and postpartum depression chucked the the glass and there was nothing in the, the <laughs> there was, glass was the, broken. the glass was broken and all the fluid was looking at leaking out um but josh sat down when i said i mean I, I literally had a freak out it was it was really bad um and my husband sat me down and said i'm gonna love you through this basically oh i'm gonna cry sorry uh and he helped systemize my postpartum depression. And that might sound really silly, but I think it really saved my life. Um, it saved my family and my kids. And, and um, you know, he, I was overwhelmed. That's one of the things that postpartum depression has is, is overwhelm. So he said, okay, I'm hiring a maid immediately. I'm going to have her come twice a week. Um, she's going to help you make meals. She's going to help you do this and that. And then I'm going to have... Y- you're going to get a nap because a lot of times people need naps for postpartum depression because they're not sleeping well. So I had a nap time. I was not allowed to come out of the room. I had to be alone. <laughs> no matter if I couldn't sleep or not, he made me stay in the room and sleep. Um, talking about meals and eating healthier and vitamins and different things like that. Date night was a mandatory. It didn't matter what was happening. The earth could have been crashing into the sun, but date night was going to happen. Um, and all these things helped literally save my life. One time I just was having a, I don't know if it was postpartum depression or culture shock. Um, I was freaking out a little bit. I don't know. It just came on. It came on like a dumpster fire to bring it back around. It came on like a dumpster fire and it was exploding. And I was just weeping for like hours. And he said, I, I scheduled you a plane ticket home to Michigan. Um, take two weeks with, I took Finley. He goes, take two weeks, share the baby, talk to your mom, drink coffee with your friends. He said, it's going to be okay. Sorry. And go, Josh, because I'm crying. No, it, it, it's so awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know, I think we all would say, we would all agree with what I'm about to say, is that uh, there's a scripture that says you can gain the whole world, but if you lose your soul, what's the point, right? But you can have the biggest business on the planet, but if you don't have your family, um, it's just so useless. And we know that. Uh, we just don't behave like it's true, including me, like including me. Because, look, for me as an entrepreneur, it's not all money. I have to be one. I am hardwired to do this stuff, to jump off the cliff and build a plane. I just will always probably do that. I'll find a way. And it, it, it's how I was made by God. This is my purpose in life. But we have to balance it against the things that are more important. And me playing and dabbling with my entrepreneurial stuff is not more important than my family. Although oftentimes, if you were to measure my time and follow me around with a, a news camera, it would, it would definitely seem that way. So I want to encourage you guys to communicate. I think a podcast like this is really good to listen together with your spouse and then just talk. You know, like sit down and talk and say, what do you want? Like, what is our vision for our life, right? What? It, and then you tell your spouse what you want. And don't, like, don't apologize for it. Just say, I need to do this for me. I need to feel like a man. I need to accomplish this thing, whatever. And then let your spouse talk and then build out some action plans. Try to get the story behind the story and put a few things in place. It's huge, man. I, I'll tell you, who would Rocky Balboa be without Adrian, right? <laughs> we we talked would, about this always, last time. I know. You always talk about Rocky. Because I love Rocky and you are my Adrian. So we can be getting wrecked by life, business is crushing us, and then you're laying on the mat with blood coming out of your ear probably. And you look over and Adrian's sitting there and she says, kick his butt, Rocky. <laughs> Except she doesn't sound like that. <laughs> you always do it that I accent. just love it. That's my Adrian accent. But then he gets up and he wins. He gets up and he wins. We need it. I need it. 
I can't. Who would William Wallace be without that girl that he loved that got murdered? He went on a rampage and like conquered a whole country. It was amazing. Braveheart, the movie Braveheart. Sorry. So anyway, listen, guys, I appreciate all of you very much. And uh, oh, you got I appreciate something? you too. And I appreciate your spouses that live this crazy, weird life. Yeah. <laughs> but it's amazing too. It's amazing. It's so amazing. It almost feels like you're on a roller coaster. Yeah. And just there's fun parts, scary parts, parts where you're just clinking up the thing, waiting. Parts where your stomach is in knots. It just ooh. Yep, yep. It's awesome. And yeah. then you get off the ride, and then you say, "Let's do it again." <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I appreciate you coming in here, and Judah, our baby, sitting on your lap. And I thought she would squeak and cry, but she fell asleep. So that's cool. Listen, if you haven't given an iTunes review, now's a great time. If you have 183 seconds, that's three minutes in three seconds. Please find a way to leave me a a five-star review on iTunes. It helps us tremendously. And also, for all my super cool kids club street team out there that are loyal fans of the podcast, I really, really need to 10x the amount of people that listen to the podcast this year. That's why I'm doing one every day is to to try to jab, 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 right hook you. I'm trying to over-deliver value to you so that in reciprocation, you will grab an episode you like, post it in a Facebook group, post it uh, on your Facebook, on LinkedIn, post it somewhere where new people can see it, and then write a little story about what you learned from that episode. Don't just post a spammy link that no one clicks, but really help me grow this thing. That, that is your awesome virtual high five, big hug back to me. I appreciate it. Take care. God bless. Hey, thanks for hanging out, friends. And from all of us here at the Quick Talk Podcast team, we hope you love today's show. We hope that you were inspired to become a doer and not just a listener. Apply what you've heard today in your own business and watch things change for the better. Lastly, remember that all the money in the world can't save your soul. Seek first the kingdom of God, my friends. We'll see you next time. For more information about the Quick Talk Podcast or Joshua's other businesses, visit our website, quicktalkpodcast.com. Have a blessed day.